Well, the moment admissions get underway for the new academic year, private schools resort to daytime robbery by demanding exorbitant fee from parents. One such episode has already been reported in one of the city-based schools. Take a look. The people sitting in front of the school and shouting slogans against its management are aggrieved parents. They allege that this branch of Apollo school is demanding huge donation, more than three times compared to the tuition fee that the government has stipulated. When they questioned the motive of school management, the staff started to assault them. Hence, the scared parents sought the help of some pro-Canada and student organizations and staged a protest today. The fee each school should collect is decided by the government. Department of Public Instruction go through annual expenditure of a particular school and based on that, it stipulates admission fee and tuition fee. No school is expected to take more than what is stipulated by the department. But this school in Higganahalli Cross is collecting almost three times more than the stipulated amount. Education department has fixed a monthly tuition fee of 270 rupees, but the school is collecting 900 rupees from parents. The parents who questioned and protested against this misdeed were subjected to physical assault. Admission marks are kept up until now. Ah, all the other day, yaro, namun ke response marked the illa. Kerala dikhe, vargade vogo nim case aki dira school mele jasti donation cuts kundi rat ke case aki dira new side gogri nim do yenu na policy kela anta avashikate illa. New ko yen barbe ko nim ke adana portal kerala tier mana mark kore anti elbo to vargade dabko bandro. Dabko bandro teachers nela bitto nam jutte eldo eldo au mana mardi dira dabbal ke daur jene ke yaro kone kerala or yerla or yaro kone illa anta kerala. Parents had filed complaints with DDPI and BEO. Upon receiving the complaint, the officials did pay a visit to the school but have not taken any action against it. This forced the parents to file a petition in court and the court has ruled in favour of them. The court in its verdict has directed school management to return additional money collected from parents through cheques. But the school management has not honoured the verdict which simply states its approach towards court directives and government orders. Parents also allege that Kamakshi Palya police who are providing security to school have favoured the school. Media people tried to ask the school's version on the issue, but management locked the main gate and did not allow media to interact with them. The Commissioner of Education Department, Mohammad Mohsin, spoke to our correspondent and this is what he had to say about the school's attitude. It has come to my notice that Apollo school is collecting more fees from parents than stipulated. The student organizations, few local bodies and parents have filed complaints against the school. The concerned DDPI and BEOs were instructed to look into the matter. They have visited the school and are going to convene a meeting soon. The department will take action based on the outcome of the meeting. The private schools continue to collect exorbitant sums from gullible parents, but the Department of Education, for reasons known only to them, is unwilling to take action. Parents will be better served if it acts and initiates action against offending schools. Amrita Patil for News 9, Bengaluru. We have often complained about being inconvenienced by delayed buses and trains. Numerous commuters experienced it in the worst possible way today. Take a look. Hundreds of commuters waiting in groups, some trying to exercise patience, while others plainly frustrated. This was a sight at Yashwantpur railway station today. The Yashwantpur Karwar Express was scheduled to leave from the station at 7.30 this morning. Many arrived an hour early just to be on the safer side, but little did they know that they had to wait for more than just an hour. Not only did the commuters have a hard time getting the railway authorities' attention, they were unable to get a straight answer on the exact time of arrival of the train. Actually, the train was at 7.30 in the morning today. We reached the place here by 6.30, 7 o'clock. We are uh, family people uh, with small children and all. We need to reach uh, Dharmasala. By this, uh, before which we have to reach the Subramanya Road before 6.30, 7 o'clock to reach there. Otherwise, it will be a big problem to us to catch the bus from there to go. Uh, these people are not uh, responsible and are, are not informing at what time exactly the train will come. We have been asking but they are not sure about the train timings and nobody is uh, responsibly answering. Most of the commuters were in groups with little kids and aging grandparents. The families were carelessly told time and again that the train would soon arrive but it never happened. They first said 11 a.m. but when the train did not arrive, officials said it would be there by 2. It seemed like these were just careless answers given to frustrated passengers to keep them off their backs.
because the car war bound Yashwantpur Express was nowhere in sight. The station managers were nowhere to be seen till late morning and even when one of the officers arrived, this is what he had to say. The commuters aimlessly waited till late afternoon when the train finally arrived at 3.15 p.m. When asked about the delay, the official said that the inconvenience was because the train was being serviced. Now, we don't know how far that is true, but the sheer ignorance of the railway authorities to their plight had left a lot of commuters fuming. The fact that the message of the train's arrival was not clearly communicated to the waiting passengers has attracted a lot of disapproval. Was it the lack of communication between the railway officials that led to the inconvenience or was it actual confusion? Many have even stated that this is a classic example of how public transport in the country functions. Maltesh, News 9, Bengaluru. Well, actor Raghuvi was cremated today in the presence of family and friends from the film fraternity. His career was filled with struggle, but he never accepted defeat. <laughs> Raghuveer might have been one of those lesser known actors in the industry, but his contribution is immense. He was one of those unique talents who proved his mettle and made a name in the industry. He did not have a godfather on whom he could bank on during his testing times. <laughs> Born and brought up in a wealthy family, Raghuveer wanted to make a name in the film industry. And it was disappointment and rejection that greeted him here. But then he was not the one to give up. He struggled a lot to win a project and finally his struggle bore fruit in the form of Chaitra the Premanjali. The movie marked the debut of S. Narayan as a director and Raghuveer as an actor. The movie was a runaway hit and Raghuveer became famous overnight. Starting from there on, there was no looking back for Raghuveer. His next two movies, Nyaya Ke Sawal and Shrunga Rakavya 2 were hits. But post these movies, his career hit a rough patch. Every project he undertook failed miserably. It was at the same time that his personal life too took a beating. He lost his wife to an accident when she had gone to help tsunami relief victims. His relationship with his father too had turned sore. By 2011, he had more or less accepted defeat on his professional and personal front. Unable to cope up with the hard times, he took to drinking and this too took a toll on him. Even during this phase of life, Raghuveer wanted one last chance to prove that he could still deliver a hit and tried his luck one last time in Mugila Chumbana. But that too ended up as a box office failure. The actor withdrew himself slowly from the film and allied activities and started taking care of his estate and maintained distance from the industry. The actor passed away last night at a private hospital after suffering a cardiac arrest. He was cremated today in the presence of family, fans and others from the film fraternity. 
ಬರೀ ಫೋನಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದೆ ನಾನು ಹೇಳೋನು ಎಸ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಅವ್ರ ಹತ್ರ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕು ಒಂದು ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ನಾನು ನಾನು ಆ್ಯಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡೋಲ್ಲ ಬರೀ ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ದೊಡ್ಡ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ಗಳು ಮಾಡೋಣ ಒಳ್ಳೊಳ್ಳೆ ಹೀರೋಗಳು ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಅಂತಿದ್ದ ಅದೇ ನಿನ್ನೆ ನಾನು ಶೂಟಿಂಗ್ ಮುಗಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬರೋಷ್ಟರಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇತ್ತು ಭಾಳ ಭಾಳ ನೋವಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ನನ್ನ ಸ್ನೇಹಿತನ ಕಳ್ಸಂಗಿಲ್ಲ ನನ್ನ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಮೆಂಬರ್ನ ಕಳ್ಸು ಈ ಕರ್ಗ ಬಂದಾಗ ಒಂದು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಉತ್ಸವ ನಡೆದಾಗ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಂದು ಇದನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಜೊತೆಗಿದ್ದವರು ಭಾಳ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಅನ್ನೋಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ಹುಡ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ್ತೇನೆ ಇಂಥ ಒಂದು ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಪ್ರತಿಭೆ ಇರತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಒಬ್ಬ ನಾಯಕ ನಟ ಇಷ್ಟು ಚಿಕ್ಕ ವಯಸ್ಸಿಗೆ ಹೋಗೋದು ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಭಾಳ ದುಃಖ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಒಳ್ಳೊಳ್ಳೆ ಸಿನಿಮಾಗಳನ್ನ ನಿರ್ಮಾಣ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಜೊತೆನ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಟ್ರು ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಬಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಡ್ ಲಕ್ ಇವತ್ತು ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಕಳ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದೀವಿ ನನ್ನ ಒಬ್ಬ ಆತ್ಮೀಯ ಸ್ನೇಹಿತ ಒಬ್ಬ ಸ್ವಂತ ಸಂಬಂಧಿನ ಕಳ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಅನ್ನೋ ಅನ್ನಷ್ಟು ದುಃಖ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ತುಂಬ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಅತ್ಯುತ್ತಮವಾದಂಥ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಸ್ಥಾನ ಆಯಿತು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಬದುಕಾಯಿತು ತುಂಬ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಮತ್ತು ಅವ್ರ ತಂದೆಯವರು ಕೂಡ ನನಗೆ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಪರಿಚಯಸ್ಥರಾಗಿದ್ದರು ಅವೆಲ್ಲ ತುಂಬ ಸುಸಂಸ್ಕೃತರು ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಯಾಡ್ ಒಂದು ಆತ್ಮ ಶಾಂತಿ Raghuveer might have left us but he has also left behind a story of unending troubles and how one man wore to tackle it all His life will serve as an inspiration to many who want to foray in the film industry A News 9 report